What's up nursery superstars, this is Howie. The thing that I have for you for this video is I have 10 steps uh, for making your day shift at med surge perfect. Sorry I'm a little bit late. I'm still trying to get ready for my NCLEX Kaplan pre-diagnosis. I think that's what it's called. Uh, so we're supposed to be making sure that we get at least a, over a 60% on our Kaplan diagnostic exams for the NCLEX. And uh, so I'm using all my day off and all my free time to make sure that I pass that exam because it'll make me a lot more confident in taking the actual NCLEX after uh, school is over. So, what do I got for you today? Well, I'm glad that you asked that because I have 10 things that I've done. Uh, I've done my residency at MedSurg for about seven weeks now and I hope you've been following. If not, check out the playlist that I have for you and I'll talk about my time in the MedSurg unit. Let me tell you, it is really fast. Things are happening and you're juggling things around. It's pretty much like playing, I don't know, like a mobile game. You're always on your feet and you always have to keep your wits about you and you can't let anything slide um, in order for you to take care of all your patients with equal amount and equal quality. Um, but the thing that I have for you for this video is I have 10 steps uh, for making your day shift at MedSurge perfect or at least as, as best as you can make it. Uh, for a student, I think this is very important. You really want to not just impress your preceptors and assure your professors, but you also want to make sure that you're doing things that you need to do. And I'm juggling my own patients now. Uh, the only thing my preceptor needs to do is basically get my medications for me. Uh, but I always, before I do anything, potentially dangerous, I always tell her what I'm doing. Especially if you have preceptors that are very strict and um, they, may, they may trust you, but they're still worried about their license. You're gonna want to always report back to her or him everything that you're doing. I mean, it might feel cool and you might feel like those patients are yours, but technically you're still operating under their license. So please, 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 before you go out and start thinking that you're <laughs> You're the poop nurse. Make sure that your preceptor knows exactly what's going on so he or she doesn't feel worried about his or her license, okay? So once again, the 10 things about starting off your day shift right as a student nurse and men's surge are these. Okay, number one. Uh, first, I know that day shift starts really early or even night shift starts really early. Uh, for you. So what you're gonna do is that uh, you're gonna have to come in 15 minutes earlier. Yes, I know that sucks, but uh, Let's say for me for example work starts at 645 and my preceptor comes in at 630 So technically you should be in the door Changed into your scrubs with your stethoscope around your neck a pen light couple of pens your ID badge uh, I even like to get some saline flushes, if that's allowed, uh, some, a packet of alcohol swabs and some gauze, uh, scissors and tape uh, ready to go. And I have that in my scrubs and it's very, very important that I'm there 15 minutes early because my preceptor has been working in the hospital for a long time and even though I've been in the med surge unit for a few weeks already and I know pretty much where everything else is, I'm still not quite sure about the little intricate details. Plus, uh, my preceptor may or may not be familiar with some of the patients already, and she's gonna expect you to know your patients just as well, if not more than she does. And the only way to do that is to get a heads up on her. And uh, if, so if he or she arrives at 6.30, you have to be there at 6.15. And that requires a, a lot of extra planning. I understand if you saw my video on how I start the day, um, I was actually n not as early as I wanted to be. So I probably would have woken up at 4.30, 4.45 a.m. rather than just 5 a.m. But again, you're gonna be able, you're gonna have to do a self-check 
and see how you're gonna be able to get to the parking lot with all your stuff and get in there into the clinic without your preceptor. Don't do any nursing interventions because that's illegal, but you have to at least say hi to all the night shift people so you can get to know them and you're not as scared when you ask them questions when they finally do the handoff report. But get in there, sit in the computer, log in, and see if you can find, you know, see if you can guess which patients are gonna be under your service. If this is the second day in a row, this is not your first day um, of the week that you're starting the shift, then it's actually better because you'll know what patients your preceptor has. Usually they ask for the same patients over and over again. Now this is not gonna apply to ED where you always get a new patient no matter what, but um, at least for med surge, it's helpful to know which patients are yours from the day before so that you can know exactly what happened to them uh, when you were gone and what else, what other parts of their care plan needs to be completed uh, for your time that day. Okay, so, hey guys, all right, here it is. The 10 steps to starting out your day shift in med surge as a student nurse. Number one, arrive at the unit 15 minutes earlier than your preceptor. Not more than that, and don't be on time. You actually have to arrive 15 minutes earlier, and I'll explain that, and I'll say why, what are the clear advantages to that, and you'll love it, listen. All right, number two, talk to your preceptors about which patient you want. Don't just take whatever you know she asks because she doesn't really care. Um, she's probably more worried about all the patients in general. Make it a point to ask her or him what patients you're familiar with and what patients you want to see that day if you want to get better at certain diagnoses or certain conditions that you want to be able to treat and um, become a nurse for. So number two is talk about which patients you want. Number three, get the handoff report. Get it? Go. All right. Find out which nurse had your patients and then talk to that nurse, ask them for a handoff report, see if they want to do it on the bedside or if they want to do the computer first or outside the room first. Number four, start your flow sheets. Don't wait, don't mess around because hopefully you've already said your highs and goodbyes to the staff that's leaving, but for you, you should already know who your patients are, what you're taking care of, what major things that they need to do today, and get in there, say hi to them. I'm sorry, but you'll have to wake up your patients, but say hi to them, do their flow sheets. By that, I mean vital signs, uh, checking and documenting their uh, peripheral IVs or central lines, uh, and also checking to see what medications that they have, as well as what uh, eyes and nose which is inputs and outputs that they've done uh, since you've received them and assumed them under your care. We'll talk more about that. Uh, number five, give your medications. The first medications that need to be happening usually have about a nine o'clock uh, give time, but you need to make sure, you should know actually which medications should be given prior to that. And see if there's any medications that you can all pull together at one time so you can give to the patient right then and there. So it'll save you time and increase your availability for all the other patients that need more uh, nursing care because they have higher acuity. Uh, also, make sure that all your assessments are done, which is especially your mini assessment. You can do a focus assessment. Um, you should do that when you're doing your mini assessment, you know, so you don't need to come back, but make sure all that stuff is done. Number six, let them have their breakfast. Let them have something to eat. After, hopefully, you'll have finished all your medications, vital signs, documentation, um, and uh, uh, did what you needed to do that's imperative for the morning and did all your assessments so that you can chart while your patients eat breakfast. And uh, number seven, finish your flow sheets. Make sure, go back. I'm sorry it sucks, but you need to go back and make sure that you charted correctly. So once again, at least in my uh, unit for the flow sheets, this is how we did it. I would do it in order so that I wouldn't forget anything. So I would start with the vital signs first, then the treatment sheets to talk about um, how the patient is uh, uh, dealing with his or her plan of care. Then I go through their eyes and nose to make sure I, I know exactly how much they peed. Because remember, anuria is, uh, uh, is a terrible thing to have in the med surge. You need to be able to, you're responsible as a nurse to know whether or not this patient has been peeing uh, appropriately or having enough bowel movements as well. 
All right, so after your eyes and nose, then you check your medications to make sure you see exactly what medications will take up most of your time. And MedSurs is usually uh, pertains to IV antibiotics, continuing infusions, uh, medications that are high ac acuity, high risk medications such as insulin, heparin, um, as well as prophylactic medications uh, such as Lovenox, Nexium, um, all those PPIs, things that you want to try to get uh, done for, to start your day. And finally, uh, checking your invasive lines, you're going to want to make sure that your patient has all um, invasive lines, if they're a high bleed patient, such as patients for a GI bleed, if they have two large bore IVs, that's a policy in our hospital. Also, you have those flushes, check to make sure that those IVs are patent and running and they're not infiltrated and they're not leaking, that they're, that they're secure. And so when you go in there after their breakfast to start their infusions, you'll be ready to go. All right, so now um, number eight. So seven was finish your flow sheets, number eight, Start your assumed care charting note. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, make sure you've done it now. This is a note stating that you've received a handoff report from the previous nurse and that you're ready to talk about the plan of care for the patient. Uh, this is more of a legality issue, but um, very good for medical legalese. I know that uh, in our facility, we call it the 24-hour nursing note, but I've seen it before. It, this is a note where you're talking about that you've assumed care for the patient and now the patient is your responsibility. Uh, then number nine, chart your assessments. This takes a long time. Whether or not you have paper or computer-based documentation and whether or not you have free documentation or documentation software where you have to choose from a bevy of options, you have to finish your 24-hour care assessing, assessment. I'm sorry, um, this is your nursing assessment note, not the 24-hour assumed care assessment note, but this is your nurse assessment note. This is where you chart what the patient looks like, um, but the detailed physical aspects from head to toe. So you've got your, uh, you've got your uh, neurology, whether the patient's oriented, you've got the head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat, which is a HINT exam. You, uh, you're checking your for respirations, see if they're even if they're just on room air, you need to document that as well. Uh, you need to check for their skin, if there's any um, breakdowns, uh, check for cardiology, check respirations, check gastroenterology, I, yeah, I got gastrointestinal system, genital urinary, if that's indicated. If, if that's not a problem and it's not pertaining to the patient's condition, don't bother with that. Okay? Again, you want to stay on, on things that are pertinent to the patient's condition. You don't want to keep going. Um, and detailing and wasting your time on charting because there's enough charting as it is to go around. So don't waste your time if that's not pertinent to the patient. All right, moving on, then you're checking for uh, sensation as well as pain, nausea, and um, uh, uh, that subtle things that such as neurocognitive deficits are more uh, better for psych units or um, uh, psych psychiatrists and NPs. Uh, for them to do, but for the general assessment that's pertain that's pertinent to the patient, make sure you've got everything down. So musculoskeletal, uh, as well as fall risk. Fall risk is huge, especially with the med surge, but it's huge for everywhere in the nursing world, the hospital world really, because you need to know if the patient fell with or without uh, your witnessing it, because a fallen patient, especially if they're older or if they have a condition that you don't know about, such as a neurological condition, is a huge, huge, huge red flag. Uh, in fact, if the patient falls uh, during the hospital visit, then they become even more of a fall risk and you have to have more documentation and the patient is not, not going to be safe and there's going to be more uh, terrible things going on with the patient. Plus, the hospital doesn't get reimbursed for any of that, so of course the admin eagles are going to go all over you, so make sure that you understand whether or not the patient is a fall risk. Make sure that you know this, so when, you're, when your preceptor asks you, hey, is he or she a fall risk, you better dang well know whether or not he or she is a fall risk, because if she or she is, then the bed alarms are on and you've documented that you've done your due diligence to help keep the patient safe, and if the bed alarm goes off, it's going to be your responsibility to go run in there and make sure that the patient doesn't fall. Okay? Um, where were we? Oh, and finally, number 10. Do your other care. So this involves specialized medications. This involves drawing blood for uh, cultures that the night shift 
hadn't already done or getting, uh, you know, getting special trays or preparing the patient for transport if they're going to the OR or transferring to the, a different unit in the hospital such as the ICU, imaging, or surgery. So once again, those are the 10, uh, 10, num 10 top things that you need to do first thing when you go into med surg in order for you to have a good shift as a student nurse, okay? This is from my experience. I'm sure it'll be different for all y'all too. If it is, please comment on um, the description below and uh, please comment below and tell me exactly what I've missed uh, so you can contribute and everybody else can learn from your experiences. All right guys, so once again, that summary is the 10 steps that you need to be able to do in order right away for you to get a good um, day shift, med surge shift for a student nurse. Number one, arrive 15 minutes earlier than your preceptor. Number two, talk about the patients that you want and learn all about them before you even go see the patient. Number three, get the handoff report from your off-going nurse. Number four, start your flow sheet, vitals and assessments, get in there, say hi, wake up the patient and get started. Uh, number five, give your AM medications. Number six, let them have breakfast and make sure that the patient's breakfast is the correct breakfast. Number seven, finish your flow sheets, vital signs, treatments, I's and O's, medications, invasive lines, chart everything. Uh, number eight, start your assumed care 24 hour charting note. This is a note stating that you've assumed care for the patient and the patient is now your nursing responsibility. Don't take this lightly and get this done. Number nine, chart your detailed assessments. Hopefully you have already done your assessments when you were doing your vital signs and you said hi to the patient and you assured them that you're a competent student nurse and that you're worthy of their trust. And at this time, you've already got everything in paper or in your head and you're down in the nursing station charting the detailed head to toe assessment into the computer. And finally, number 10, everything else. So your IVs, drawing your blood, putting in a Foley catheter, doing any other procedures that you need to have done uh, before the, the patient needs to leave for another unit, you know, getting all the paperwork done for that, and discussing with the doctor any changes uh, into the plan of care, or if anything has changed in their plan of care, that any problems that have been resolved. Uh, communicate, 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 not just with your fellow colleagues, but also with your doctors, uh, the residents, interns, and attendings. Pharmacists as well, Everybody else is part of the care team, such as respira respiration therapist, dietitian, all that, okay? You're the one that's the center of care besides the patient. You are right there. You are the closest thing taking care of the patient. So if there's anything wrong, you are the last bastion of safety and the patient trusts you. This is why nurses are the most trusted profession because you're out there defending the patient from not just their disease, but from any outside mistakes. Hopefully it doesn't come from you, and if it comes from anybody else, hopefully you'll catch it. All right, so I hope this is helpful for you. Again, if you have anything more to contribute, please comment below, subscribe to me, Nurse Howie, and I'll see you in the next video, at least one a week on Tuesdays. See you later.